well after the owl, somebody saw that video, a local a neighbour of mine, and this morning, and uh, yesterday morning, had a green woodpecker fly into his window. It's unfortunately, killed itself. Most of the woodpeckers are bigger than this. Um, it's quite a small green woodpecker, really, but very attractive. And I'd like to set it up. And I've made a uh, mount for it already, a branch which I want to put it onto. And I can either have it just on here like this, but the wings are very attractive, and I'm, I'm very tempted to have it just sort of landing on here and, and pecking at it. Basic like instructions for materials for this and tools are on the last video on the barn owl. Um, same things again, larger birds, smaller birds, doesn't make any difference. We're going to need just slightly thinner wire, that's all. So the first thing to do is to find the breastbone, just here. It's funny how this happens, I might not do any taxidermy for ages and then suddenly something will come along, which is quite flat here. I've got to pull the feathers apart. Now remember this skin is much finer than the ones of the larger birds or the owls and so on, so I've got to go quite carefully at this. There's a the breastbone there without going into the meat, just nick it and then pull apart as soon as you can. You see we've got the breast already peeled away there. As soon as you can, in with the borax, immediately start to get that borax underneath that skin and preserving it from the very beginning, that borax into there so we can lift that skin away right around, come down to the leg here it's going to be quite important because we're going to need to put wire into there. So again, peel around the leg, just gently pushing down. Be light-handed because um, you don't want to tear the skin. They're very difficult to sew up these little birds. And work that skin down and round so you get your fingers right around that leg. And we can pull that leg actually out like the sock off the foot. Not gory at all. People think, oh, he's dealing with meat, there's going to be guts, there's going to be blood. No, it's not. We don't go inside the bird at all. And any time we get anything like that is when we have to clean the skull cavity out, and that's the messiest part. And that's it. Pull that back through, and already now I can work through to the other leg. So the idea is I want to work underneath this bird and get right round the back here. There we go. You can see it there. Now look, there's the leg. Try and get my fingers around in between, lower down, pull that skin right down to the knee joint again, or the ankle joint in this case. There we go. And I can come through there now. That's pulled it away. And then borax in here. And we'll just snip that off. Pull that inside. Pull it back through. Now we've got to be ever so careful and find our way down to the tail. Remember about the tail on the owl? We just come down to the parson's nose there. Then, if I can get right the way round, which is my intention. Next, there's the two legs. Look, I kept right round here. Look, there's my finger just poking through here now. And just coming through behind. And away it comes. There's not much meat to scrape away there. Pull it to one side and we'll just... Cut away any little bits of excess. There's not a lot there at all. But we cut in very, very neatly and carefully. And again, cover that raw spot in plenty of borax before pulling it back. Right down there to the neck. Keep working that borax all the time. Keep it in there. Don't forget, because it will help you as well as preserving it. Right back down to the, to the neck on this side, we've probably done it the other side, and I'm working up to the wings now, look. Here come the wings, here we come to the wings, a little bird, hardly anything there, only the size of a mouse when it comes down to it. And up to the wing here, there's the wing, go around that wing, feel my way around, keep that poor axe coming on there. There we go, pulling that right up to the joint of the wing there now and I'm ready again to snip off. I've got it right up there. I could snip that straight off but let's see if I can go a bit further yet. Be nice if I can bring, here we go, nice if I can bring that right along. It is possible with a small bird just to snip off there but I would rather not have any flesh in there whatsoever. I would rather skin right back, right up to the wrist joint here. There we go, look. That's fantastic. Again, make sure that you always put plenty of borax on because you're going to pull that back in a moment. Scissors again, no meat beyond this at all, no muscle. 
plenty of borax inside, pull it back, turn the bird over to this side and we'll start to peel back this wing now. Carefully. I need to get the back of that skull at least out. I'd, like, I'd prefer to get right down to the beak if I can. Okay, plenty of borax again on hold of that to keep it well preserved. Take away any dampness too. Any dampness that's coming on any little bits of blood or fleck anywhere. And now coming away. And now carefully with my fingernail, remove the skin up and around the head. Push it back like that sock again I was telling you about. And again, this is why you need plenty of borax. You've got to get hold of it. You've got to pull that back and the borax helps you get that leverage over the head. If it won't come, you've just got to carefully just prise it away without cutting the skin itself. That way you mustn't cut the skin. And pull it away. There we go. Now it's suddenly come. You see, once you get it to start, I don't know, I keep emphasising it, keep plenty of borax going. Pulling that away from the bird's face, cheeks, right down to the edge of the beak. Need to remove these eyes in a minute, so I've got to go carefully across them. There's the eye look. You can see it there now. We've cleared it and that's what matters. And let's actually get those eyes out now. Well, I've got to this stage. Again, I want plenty of borax on that to dry it out. To get the eyes out, remember we're going to need the tweezers. Just cut around the eye. Here. Yeah. Right the way around. Get the tweezers underneath and simply lift it out and it comes out as easily as that. There we are, one eye. Same the other one. And I've got to find an eye, it's a dark eye, it's a black eye. I've got to find an eye the same size as that shortly. And hopefully we should be able to remove all of this in one go and then get what's left of the grey matter out from inside. The rest can be done with padding, so I need all of that out. There we go. There's the mess. And we now need to just move out this lot here. Quite easy to do with the scalpel. And that's the only really messy bit. And with a bit of paper towel we can just clean up the mess that exists. I think there's any more. Again, preservative. Put in the, the borax, completely filling that. And pour it out. Now I need some fiberglass wool to already pack that immediately right up tightly. And next I've got to actually find the eyes that will suit that bird. Hopefully I've got a bit of a stock. Here I've got various eyes of different sizes. These ones would be perfect for it I reckon. I've just got to colour them now. They're a very grey blue just around this edge. So I want to go back in there and just put some acrylic around those. These other fish eyes and so on can go back into the blue dries on the back of those eyes. I'll just try and get this body cut to shape. Here we are then, we've got the bit of foam that's just about the right size. Lay the body on top and I want to just cut that equally, both sides. Use my knife for that. There we go, we're getting there, look. So that's the bird that way. Now all I've got to do is quite narrow just up in there. The wings are going to come up into that cavity anyway. So we've got a chest area there. We've got a narrow body at the back here, which we'll work out now to slice that out. Anyway. It's probably not the shape you'd expect to see for a woodpecker, but um, it's near enough that shape now for me to uh, start padding the bird out, putting the eyes in. We want to keep this because I'm going to show you at the moment how those legs work later and how those wings work, because we've got to fold those wings up. You'll notice that the wings come forward, back, then forward again. Now that's quite important if we're going to fold the wings to get that position right with the wings actually folded. We have to understand how the mechanics of the bird work. And the same with the leg, forward, back, forward. I'm going to keep that there for the moment so that we get that dead right when I put the wires through. Right, let's um, get those eyes into the head now. They should be dry enough to Gently place in there. So those go smack in the middle of that fiberglass. Just pushed in like that. See, they're just the right fit. Smack in the middle, push in. 
Now the hard part. We've got to get the we've got to get the skin back over that back over that um, so a bit more borax in there. Make sure everything's covered in borax before it dries out too much. That long bill find its way back through the neck here, and you see the bill just coming out there now. This is the hard part. We've got to get this back over here without tearing it. Right back over, there's the bill, there's the skin coming over the head. Without tearing that at all, we've got to get this back over the, the neck of the bird and back over the head. So far so good. Here we go. Don't want it balding. And through it comes, there we go, look. i to dry that out with a hairdryer later to get those feathers back in, just so that it's not quite so pulled back so tight. And there we can see the eyes. Just showing nicely there, look at that look. Next part is to cut the wires and wire the bird after we've stuffed the, this is only stuffing we actually do after we pad out or stuff the, the wings and the legs. It's got to go right through and through the body. So again, like the owl, we're going to cut two lengths the same for the wings. Make that little wedge shape to pin the tail. So the tail is going to be a shape like that. We're going to come into the um, like bird. that, because that's how it's going to hold it. Hold it up like that. Just chop those off equally. Can be awkward otherwise. So there's our tail. Then we need the head, which we've got to pad at this stage before we even thread the wires through. Now I need some ordinary wool, fiberglass wool. <coughs> Just to wrap that up, there's my ordinary wool. And let's look at that neck on that bird. It's, uh, we're going to start, we want that to go right through the body, so the neck of the bird. Let's put this through there now, so we've already got it ready. And that's going to go through in the middle here, right through the styrene, hopefully. There we go. And again, I showed you last time, make that loop. Make that loop back through like this. And we push that in and pull it through. Tap it in if you have to. But you must get make that wire really well in because we don't want it pulling out later. We've got the exact length of the correct measurement and it comes out there. So we want to be padding up to the thickness of that neck. Almost simple household stuff. You can nick some wool from the attic, fiberglass wool, and you can take some wool from your wife's or your mum's knitting. And there we are, go round and round that, not too tight, just tight enough to make the same thickness as that neck. This is not the old fashioned type of wool, it's the more modern, stress this, it's the more modern, non-hazardous one, which is not itchy, doesn't uh, fly about and get in your lungs or anything like that. Now we have to do the same with the legs, there shouldn't be too much to do in these legs because they don't have very long legs, these birds. Not like a heron or anything like that. So there we have the bird packed, ready to set up. Next I have to put the wires um, through the bird. And to do that it's not easy. We've got to thread it, in the case of the feet, right up through. And this is not easy at all. Up through the skin. And the hard part is just to get through where the joint is here and not come out. So you might have to push that upward a bit to do it. This is where I don't want to be using a heavier wire because um, I find it even more difficult than it already is through here. So I've got up through the leg there, it's just getting past that knee joint now. Here. There we go. 
up and through the padding until we come out of the padding inside here. You see I've just put some hooks on the end there for the moment just to stop the wire coming out. And the animal should be quite light so these wires should be heavy enough to hold this. In through the end of the wing, a little long, make sure you don't come out the other side as I just did. Keep inside the wing and right through the padding down here. Twist it round if it's curving a bit. Now that wire's come out there, I'll put the start again there. Right, just now I showed you how the bird will be when we get all of the wires into the body, into the uh, foam. And that's what I've got to do now. So I showed you how, now I've got to do the same thing actually doing it. And it's not quite so easy now because obviously the whole thing is stretched out and tensioned. But we'll start by getting the head into the body, we hope. Carefully find the neck. It's a mess at the moment, but hopefully we'll get it done, it won't do. Right up through the back of the head here. And out just at the front of the beak. Through the skull. There, that, that, that's it. And we lift that neck up and over there. And there we are, push that up into it. And there's the bird stretching out like that. Let's push that down and on so it's not too far. Now the hard part, getting the wings through as we did just now. They come in again here. We've already got the holes made, so I've only got to, got to go through. Put the same holes through and double it over and come back again. Exactly as I showed you just now, just so you understand it. Push that all right through. We've already got the hole there, so what we've got to do is double it over and pull it back. And we need to be able to stick this tail on. The tail we know comes out from just the back here. And we've got a little bit of wire here for that. There we go. So, we should be able now to stitch her up. In this case I'm going to use six pound fishing line. I want it much finer than the previous one we did. Needle's ready there. Pull off thread and I'm going to double that out. So I'm going to take off about this much. I like, I like to use it double. There we go. And this time as I say I'm going to go around and form a locking stitch. It's difficult to tell you how much fishing line to cut off in the first place you could have just sort of I would have double what you think or maybe triple because you tend to use quite a lot doubling up on the sewing and we've got to fold the wings we've got the legs already in position there now these wings and you notice they come back forward and back so they come back forward and then back and that is how we're going to fold them back into himself like this so I've got to just adjust this now to be correct a basic bird shape now I want to get that onto that bit of stick so I can actually set up dinner position. So what I'm going to do is tidy up a bit now and then I can finally set it with wrapping wool around it and setting pins in it. So we'll start cleaning up and tidying up on the bird. Well I think that one just about sets that one up. I need to put some uh, moss and stuff around on those tips of the uh, base and the branch a bit to make it a bit more realistic after we've cut the wire off.
Right, one of the finishing stages of this now, I need to start removing bits of wire and tidying things up. Um, and uh, I need to put the moss around here to make it a more, lot more natural. So, we're getting close and start to remove. It's a little bit early yet, but uh, there we go. Just pull the head back over that. I shouldn't need to touch the bird much anyway. At the moment, it's not quite dry enough to do the rest of the work on the bird yet, but I can certainly do the on the base. So let's do just that. And we'll start off by some nice bits of moss using white PVA glue, the ordinary woodworking glue, to just um, tidy up these bits of wire at the back here as well, which I can hide under moss too. Make sure you've got plenty on there. It'll dry clear this white work PVA adhesive anyway, so it's not going to be a worry. It could just look like a bit of wet wood. So let's not uh, worry too much about that. Plenty of it on there though, because you want it to glue on well and not be dropping off on furniture later. I'll just cut that off with that, as if it's just growing over. This is where I've got a separate pot, because you can see the mess that's coming off it. I really don't want that all over my paintings if I use it later or something like that. Now we talked about the back where the wires were. I think it would be a good idea to just put a little bit of moss over those wires. Just on the underside there, not a lot, just a bit. And now I want to do the whole base. So let's get a load of moss and I want to plaster it round this this base, especially around these edges. That's why I've got the newspaper here because I don't want it all over my table, do I? It's been just down to the woodland below me, and the stone walls have lots of this lovely moss all over them. Can use silicone. But I think the, uh, the glue is less messy to, to use. Fill in the gaps. Try and dry your fingers off, otherwise, if you get glue on your fingers, it'll be lifting the moss off again. I'm just sticking with paper if it can help it. That's going to be a nuisance. So I'll put it onto dry paper now. Move this bit out of the way. Take that page over. Turn over a new leaf. And that's a nice little mossy stump. Look at the bird in the daylight a bit later. Mm -hmm.